Hey guys, what is up? Well, today I'm going to do a little bit different video than I normally do. Our half bath black uh, tank will not dump. And I decided, you know what? I'm just gonna deal with this right now. So you're gonna witness everything that I did impromptu. It's gonna be live on how I decided on how I was gonna pull this unit out and fix these problems. Now this repair and replacing parts is on a 2012 Winnebago Vista 35F. But any RVer out there that has a black tank and it's full of waste and you have a maciator pump and possibly the gate valve is not working, uh, this is gonna be very helpful to you. Details coming up on RV Street. Okay, let's get right to it. Uh, Joni has just told me it's macerator, not maciator. Well, you know what? I'll, you guys know what I'm talking about. To me, it makes no difference. So let's pick it up from the very beginning. Hey guys, welcome back. Joni and I are up here in the beautiful state of Maine and we have a problem. My half bath uh, valve and maciator pump is not working. Right before we got to our destination here in Maine, we stopped off at a campground in the very south part of Maine because we knew we were coming up here to Mooch Dock and we wanted to dump all of our tanks. I pulled the valve and normally when I pull this valve, I can hear this kind of a sound. I can feel this tank. It's just a big swooshing noise where it dumps right down here into this uh, 90 into the maciator pump. I didn't hear it that time. And I looked at Joni and I said, man, I don't know, Joni. I said that, that I pulled that valve and I didn't hear that swishing noise. So we went around to the other side of the wet bay anyway, started pushing the button to empty this tank and it was barely coming out. And we actually pumped for about 15 minutes. <laughs> Usually we can dump this tank in about three minutes. But this thing is coming out so slow, it took 15 minutes and it finally got it all emptied. And I told Joni, I said, well, I said, we're gonna have to replace this valve. Now let's jump forward about a week. And that valve just really uh, was on my mind. I'm like, I don't, that's never given us any trouble. So I made up a real soapy hot water solution in my two quart uh, uh, pitcher and I threw some soapy water down the toilet where it would come down into here. And then I took this valve and opened it and closed it and opened it and closed it, hoping that that soap might lubricate and unjam that seal that's on each side of this gate valve. I thought I had it. I thought that it had worked. But today we dump tanks again here on the property we're at right now. We have a uh, septic system and so we dump our tanks into this uh, portable tote right here. And then we drag it over to the septic system and dump it in there. So that's what we did today. Once again, this waste tank was not pumping. So since I've got to replace this gate valve, I'm also gonna replace this maciator pump. I, you know, even though the pump is working, the impeller may not be good. Okay, I hear it spinning, but it might not be good, but it doesn't matter. This is all 10 years old. Now here's the problem that we're gonna start off with. Remember the soapy water and stuff in there? We thought that it was fixed. And we actually went potty a few times in here too. So I've got about 10 gallons of wastewater in here. Most of it's soapy water, but I gotta get this water out of here so I can work on this. And here's how we're gonna do that. I have here a 110 transfer pump and I've already tested this and this thing draws a lot of water really quick. So I attached a long green hose here. This is the pickup hose and what I'm going to do is I'm going to feed it down the toilet, down into the tank and hopefully even down through the bottom part of the tank and down into that 90 and I'm going to try to suck out as much water as I can. This is the discharge hose. We'll be putting the black tank water 
into here. So let's get started. I'm gonna bring all this gear up into the half bath and I'll show you how I'm setting this up. I wanted to just show you something here too. Years ago when I was getting our coach ready for full time, the first thing I did in the plumbing department was I installed a shutoff valve back here. You can see that picture right here. So now I have the water to the toilet shut off. So here's my green pickup hose. You can see it goes all the way down in there. And this is my exit hose, my output hose. And this hose is going to the portable tote. This is 110. It had, this pump has no on off switch. It's just on. So here we go. You hear that? Okay, well, I got all the water out of the tank and I went ahead and took a, a coffee cup of water and threw it in here. That way, while I'm working on the valve system, the gate valve and the pump and all of that, this seal in the toilet won't dry out. So I got all the water out of the black tank, but there's still gonna be some water trapped right here and into that 90 and maybe even a little bit right here. My plan is going to remove this whole thing as a unit. The way I'm gonna deal with the water that's still left in these uh, joints, these couplings, is I'm gonna get two uh, of our kitchen trash bags and double them up. And once these screws are undone here, I'm gonna lift this up and put plastic bags underneath the whole unit. Uh, any drainage is gonna go right into the, that plastic bag. All right, we're fixing here to go to the next step. Um, I got the four screws out of the pump. You can see it right here, see that? Well, as Joni and I were lifting this pump up to scooch that plastic bags up underneath there and behind that valve, uh, the valve actually just popped off that rubber gasket right there and the water that was remaining in this little upper area splashed onto the bottom of this plate here. So I immediately put in some uh, towels in there to soak that up. Uh, it really wasn't that much water. I knew there wasn't going to be much in there, but I didn't anticipate that popping off that valve, but it's no big deal. Uh, we got it. We're going to be able to get this thing out of here. So here's what we're going to do next. So what I ended up having to do is cut this hose. This is a really thick hose. The last thing we have to do now is the electric. So here's the wiring right here. This is 12 volt, okay? You've seen me work with 12 volt before. It's nothing dangerous to work with, uh, just as long as you don't touch two wires together. You know, it's real simple. So when I get this new pump, I have a black and a red wire coming off the pump and I want to just mark this, okay? So I've made two pieces of tape. So the red wire from the pump goes to the yellow. So I'm marking that red to that yellow. And then the black wire goes to the white wire. So I'm putting that piece of tape there. That way I don't have to think about it and try to remember, right? So I'm just going to take this pump motor and cut it right here and cut it right here and put a little wire nut on the 12 volt side that goes to the motor home. Same thing here, cut the white, cut the black, put a wire nut on the white that goes to the motor home. So now here are those two wires and we'll just stick them up over there out of the way. And there's still a little water in there, but you know what, you gotta do what you gotta do. And there my friends is this whole unit. This is a repair I did down here years ago where it reduces down into here. We're gonna take all this tape off and I'm gonna redo this coupling here also. So here's where I cut it off. Here's the wiring. And this is the top of the gate valve that pulled off when I was lifting this up. But look inside this, this valve, look. The valve is working. So now I know that the valve was good, but I'm changing it anyway. I mean, I've already got this out. It's 10 years old. This is probably the problem right here. This has a little impeller right here on the end of this. And even though when you turn on the pump and it's spinning, it's not producing any pressure to discharge and empty the black tank. So, well, it's been about 10 days since I yanked that whole uh, old unit out of there. 
and I had to wait to get all the parts and all of that. And most all the parts came real quick, except for the macerator pump. Uh, that took about a week and a half. But before I get into how we're going to assemble this back together, I want to do a little bit of forensics on this old pump. Look inside here. This is where the impeller is. And you can see that it's all clogged up. So it wasn't my gate valve at all. So let's open this up. I want to show you what this looks like inside. This is what it looks like on this part. And look at that. These are metal blades inside here. And this pump is 10 years old. It's a combination of hair and who knows all what else. Look at those, those blades right there. Those blades are bent. So could I have just removed the maciator pump cleaned it up and used it again? Well, probably, but why? Uh, like I said earlier, this is 10 years old and I've got all this equipment coming out. I might as well just go back with new, but there's some more other problems with this unit. If you remember when I had this all together, remember that green tape that I had around here? Well, that's because there was a leak up underneath here. And so when I pulled this whole unit out, I turned it over and there was a long hairline crack right here. And that green tape did fix this and it didn't leak for five years. But the other problem here is not only was this coupling cracked, but whoever put this pump in initially, which I suspect was the uh, factory, they cut off the end here. Here is the new pump. And you see how it has this tapered flange right here? And this flange is missing here. And as I got to looking at this, you can actually see the saw marks. They went ahead and sawed that off. For what reason, I don't know. Also, inside this coupling where this screwed onto, these threads in here are all galled up. And that's what happened. They cut this off. They screwed the old pump onto the coupling and it was cross threaded and they kept turning it and kept turning it so tight that it not only was galling the threads, but it cracked the coupling. So in order for me to get this old thing off of here, I had to literally take a screwdriver and drive it in here and split it open so I could separate these pieces to show you. With the new pump, we're not gonna cut that off. You can see this is the old one. This is the new one, and this is the coupling, and it's gonna slide over and it's gonna screw onto here, and this piece will slide over that. That's the way this install should have been done. That way in the future, if this ever goes bad again, all you'd have to do is undo these four screws, hold this, and remove the old pump. So since this had a cracked coupling, on the old one. It also was cracked underneath here too. This is a 90 degree elbow. This is called an eccentric tank reducer. And it goes inside here like this. And, that, and then I will take another piece of inch and a half PVC and put that in there. That will go over that. And this will screw into here. Once that's complete, then we'll take this rubber coupling here and that will go over this end. And here's my new gate valve. This is a three inch Valterra gate valve. And I had to cut a, a piece of three inch PVC. It will go up into there. This will go into here and that will be my new assembly. One other uh, small difference here is the old pump says right here, fuse size 20 amp. On this one, on the new pump, it says fuse size 25 amp. And then right above it, it says voltage 12 volt, uh, 17 amps max. Now the wiring in the coach has already got a 20 amp uh, fuse on it. So we're safe there. It's, it's, all, it, it's not gonna be a problem going below. This is 14 gauge wire. So 
uh, a 20 amp will work, but you wouldn't want to put like a 30 amp uh, breaker in there. If anything went wrong with this motor or it got snagged or got hot, you want that to trip sooner than later. So as an added precaution, and just something that I like to do, my wiring in this motor home goes right up into the control area inside where all of my fuses are. And that motor, this, uh, macer this macerator pump, is uh, fused for 20 amps. Well, I bought a package of two inline uh, fuses, and we're gonna install an additional 20 amp fuse down in, in the area where the, where the pump is. You'll see that in a few minutes. So here are all the new parts. This is the way the valve will go, and this will go up into the upper boot. This here has to be glued. This has to be glued, and this has to be glued. And all those pieces, I went ahead, this is something that I like to do. I took a little 120 sandpaper, and I went into all these areas and took off that glaze, just that shiny glaze. And then we're going to go ahead and we're going to use some primer and some PVC glue. And we're going to put all these pieces together, including putting the pump on. And then we're going to insert the whole uh, assembly back into the hole. One last thing that I want to show you that I'm going to do. This is the new uh, gate valve. This is a three inch gate valve. And you see how that works there? It's like a spade. It's a real thin spade in there. And right in here on the top and the bottom are two O-rings right in there. I'm going to take some of my 3M silicone paste and I'm going to put it and, sm and smash it inside that, those two O-rings. This is also known as plumber's grease. You don't ever want to use Vaseline on rubber parts, anything petroleum based. You do not want to use that. It will break down the rubber. But using silicone paste will really preserve those O-rings real well. And then we're just going to take it and there you go. You see that? So I'm going to start assembling this. This is the primer that you use. This kind of etches and it takes off that glaze so that the glue will adhere better. This stuff will stain your fingers <laughs> and clothes. Anytime you're using this for any kind of a, a job, a water job, or in this case, a sewer job, it's always best to wear some rubber gloves because it will stain. So now this is going to go into here, and this is my cement. This is fast drying cement, and that seats right to the back of that shoulder in there. So that part now is complete. Now that I look at this, I really didn't need to prime that part because this is the way these two pieces go together. But it's okay. It's no big deal. Now I have this rubber coupling on here and I have it sitting on this shoulder. And this is the way it will be orientated. So I want those clamps to be facing out so I can get to them if I ever need to when it's mounted inside. We're going to leave this one loose for now. So now for the elbow and the eccentric tank, uh, tank reducer. This reducer has to be centered right this way. Not like that, not like that, but right in the center. So we're going to use our primer again. And then this is the outside part of that. And then that needs to go just like that. Okay, so now I got that eccentric piece in there, and this piece will go over there like that. Now we have to put in this little nipple here. This is inch and a half. We're going to put that right in there like that. And do the inside here. And on this one, I'm putting the glue in here. We'll make it easier to handle. And that just butts up against that shoulder. And then the next thing is to put the coupling. One side is slip-on with glue. 
The other side is threaded. Prime this side here, and I'm gonna put the glue on the inside of this one and put that on like that. So now we have that piece, and this is gonna go on to there. As I said earlier, look at the threads on this thing. This was just all galled up, and I think it looks like they put plumber's putty or something on there, which is so unnecessary. Uh, this is all gravity fed. It's not like it's under, you know, 75, 100 PSI or anything. They galled the threads, they cracked the coupling, and used plumber's putty. And it looks like some tape too. I think they used both. We're only going to use Teflon tape. And remember how I've showed you how to do this before, if, if you've never done this before. Whenever you're wrapping Teflon tape on threads, you always go clockwise. Like when we turn this uh, coupling on there, it's gonna go tight this way. So it'll always be turning with the way the tape was put on and it won't unravel the tape. So we're gonna put some Teflon tape on here and these are some pretty deep threads. So I'm gonna be generous here. Going clockwise. And that should be good. Now we're going to take and turn the coupling on there. And you see that? We want this nice and straight with the pump. So now we're ready to put this piece on. See, it's got a shoulder right here. So that'll just go down to that shoulder. We want to make sure this is valve and everything is all nice and straight and put those clamps, make one final adjustment here. So they'll be easy to get to if I ever have to get to them, which I hope I never do. And there's the new assembly. Before we put this unit in, the last thing I wanna do, is you've seen me do this before, on the gate valve stem right here, I take my dry lube, my silicone dry lube, and I work that in and out. This is a maintenance item that I do to all my valves, uh, usually once every three months or so. Keeps them moving nice and smooth. Uh, it's just a good maintenance item to do. So before we get ready to be putting this whole baby in, I just wanna thank every one of you and remind everybody that everything that I have done here is in my Amazon store. Like every video I do, all my parts, all my tools, uh, lube, sprays, protectants, little tricks of things that I've done, they're all in my Amazon store. And I wanna thank all of you, and Joni too. Uh, thank you so much for how you use our Amazon store. It's been such a blessing that you guys have been bookmarking our store, and every time you need something on Amazon, you click our store link first, you go to Amazon. If it's in our, if it's in our store, great. If not, you still continue to shop on Amazon like you normally would and check out. It's a great way to say thank you, Martin. Thank you for taking the time to doing these videos and helping the RV community. Oh, and if you're new to my channel, the link to my Amazon store is down there in the description text. Okay, let's get ready. Let's put this big bad boy in here. This is why I want to do this all out here, right? It just comes out in one and goes in as one. So we're gonna put this in here, as I'm going to take and I'm gonna put that back up in that rubber boot and scooch it forward and in so that these mounting bolts down here will go over the holes. That's why it was so important for me to measure everything uh, exactly so that the orientation of the motor and the piping going up there is all exactly the way it was on the old piece. So everything lines up anytime. When I take something apart and I'm putting it back together, I always, always, always put never sees on the new bolts coming back in. If you guys don't have a can of this in your bin, shame on you. And that way, if you ever have to come back in here later, there'll be a breeze to take out. 
Okay, so I got that all up inside that boot up in there. I still need to tighten that ring. And I got all four bolts in the motor, so everything is nice and tight. Okay, I got the clamp tightened up there, and I got my discharge hose onto that nipple there and, and clamped right here. So now let's deal with the wiring. So here are the two wires that we marked. Remember that? This yellow wire goes to the red. The white wire goes to the black. And this is to the power to the motorhome. This goes to the wet bay over where the switch is for the macerator pump. And when you turn the pump on over there, that's what empties the black tank. Earlier this morning, I took these, uh, wing, these uh, wire nuts off and I tested these two to make sure which one was hot this yellow wire that goes to the red wire on the pump is the hot wire. And the reason I said that is because we're going to put the fuse on that wire. These fuses, uh, they can't, like I said, they come two to a pack. And they also come with a fuse. And this is a 20 amp fuse. And you can cut these to length. You can cut it here and here and splice it in somewhere, whatever. I'm just gonna cut it right in the middle. Uh, you never know. Sometimes it's always good to have some extra wire, right? And then when I'm all done, I will uh, zip tie it all up in there, you'll see. So I'm just gonna take those two wires like that. This is 14 gauge wire, just like this wire is. And I'm gonna put the first lead on the yellow wire and then put my end connector on there and crimp that, that's nice and tight. Then I'm gonna take the red wire from the motor and put it on the other end here. Put another end cap, check that, nice and tight. So now what we've done is we've just put a fuse in between the hot on the motor and the hot on the motor home. Put the 20 amp fuse in here. And what I really like about these is this got this nice little cover. These are in my Amazon store in the electrical department. So then we're gonna take the black wire to the white wire, right? And put an end connector on there. Then I'm gonna take all of this wiring and zip tie it up in here. I'll show you that in a minute. And so there you have it. I have the harness from the motorhome, all that wrapped around, zip tied to the discharge hose, and everything looks good. Okay, so let's give this a test. I put five gallons of, uh, of bleach water into this tank right here through the toilet, and this valve is now pulled. Let's go to the wet bay and empty this baby. So here at our wet bay, I'm all hooked up with my sewer into the portable tote and right back here is my valve the other valve to the black tank over on the other side so i'm going to pull that and now hit the waste pump switch and there we go yahoo and looking in here Go ahead and shut the valve and no leaks. So it's all done. Uh, while I was uh, sitting here doing the wiring and stuff, Joni said, man, I don't know how that old pump was even pumping at all with all that crap around it and those blades bent. And I have no clue. Whatever happened down in there, uh, it happened fairly quickly. All in all, you know, we have a bath and a half, so we just use the other bathroom and we're fine. If you want to know more about how to take care of your RV and do upgrades, just click my logo right under this video and that will take you to my YouTube homepage. On my homepage, you'll see the playlist tab. Click that and every video I've ever done will be right there on that page in different categories. Or as another option, you see that magnifying glass in the upper right hand corner? Click inside there and type what you're looking for. If I've done a video on that subject, it will list it. Anyway guys, that's it for now. 
We got a brand new half bath maciator and valve and all that kind of goodness. So we shouldn't have to worry about this for a long time. Anyway, that's it for now. This is RV Street. Stick around.